And after days of negotiations, reports saying the G20 negotiators have achieved a compromise on the joint communique. News agency Reuters saying that the countries have reached a compromise on the language to describe the Russia-Ukraine war. As per the details that have been trickling in, as per the reports, uh, the group remained deeply divided on the Russia-Ukraine war and the Western nations are pushing for strong condemnation of Russia, while others are demanding a focus on broader economic issues. And it is in this backdrop that the report of the Sherpas reaching a compromise on the language to be used in the final communique has surfaced. The draft will now be presented to the leaders, which remains open to last-minute changes, and no further details were immediately available. But uh, the report also saying the declaration could be similar to the language in the communique issued in Indonesia at the 2022 summit. The Bali declaration noted that while most nations condemned Russia for the invasion, there were also divergent views. <laughs> The position of the West uh, has been very, uh, I would say, radical. Uh, I mean, in Russia, you can't have differences of views on this war. I, for example, I can say that uh, in a formal way, certainly President Putin breached certain international rules when he made his uh, order on the 24th of February 2022. But uh, let's see it in the context. The West has been breaching rules for all the preceding 30 years since uh, since uh, its invasion of Yugoslavia and since many things that it did uh, in Iraq and, and, and in Syria and many other places. So in that sense, Russia was just reacting. It was not provoking uh, tensions. And of course, Russia will not accept uh, the Western mantra that uh, uh, this was some kind of unprovoked aggression from Russia, as they say. The New Delhi summit began earlier in the day with the African Union getting a permanent membership of the grouping of the world's largest economies. And with this, India has set the agenda straight. Under India's presidency, the needs, voices, as well as aspirations of countries of the global south will remain in focus. Basic नॉर्थ और साउथ का डिवाइड हो ईस्ट और वेस्ट की दूरी हो फूड फ्यूल और फर्टिलाइजर का मैनेजमेंट हो टेररिज्म और साइबर सिक्योरिटी हो हेल्थ एनर्जी और वाटर सिक्योरिटी हो वर्तमान के साथ ही आने वाली पीढ़ियों के लिए हमें इन चुनौतियों के and let's go straight across now to our principal diplomatic correspondent, Siddhant Sibyl, with me on the broadcast for more on all of that. Uh, Siddhant, let's first talk about the messaging that India has put out very strongly and sharply uh, through the Indian Prime Minister's address earlier in the day as well. Uh, the stress on inclusivity, which has, of course, been the overarching theme as far as G20, uh, India's G20 presidency is concerned. Why is it so important for India uh, to lay emphasis on the issue of inclusivity and also the potential that the country really has uh, to emerge as the voice of the so-called Global South? Well, India's G20 summit has started and we saw earlier today the Indian Prime Minister addressing various sessions uh, in which he focused about uh, uh, issues that are plaguing the world. He talked about the trust deficit and now, of course, uh, the big focus is whether there will be a joint statement or not. Uh, uh, there have been various reports on the joint statement issue, but largely it looks like uh, it will be a matter of time that there will be some kind of announcement regarding the joint statement. But essentially, India, by hosting this summit is uh, trying to pitch itself as the global diplomatic capital of the world and it's very true today as global leaders crisscross the Indian national capital and also hold talks uh, not only with the Indian Prime Minister but also amongst themselves. In fact, uh, uh, the, the, the bilateral meeting between the Indian Prime Minister and the Japanese Prime Minister has just started 
short while ago it happened with the british prime minister and overall uh, the tone and tenor of the entire summit proceedings here is uh, uh, showing that how there is uh, uh, the focus on resolving the challenges of the world and form convergences uh, on various issues from uh, from climate change to debt related issues Right, Siddhant, as we speak, those are the live images coming in uh, from Bharat Mandapam of uh, the bilateral meeting taking place um, and uh, the leaders of India and Japan uh, discussing a wide range of issues on the table. Uh, the expectations have been high uh, given the fact that uh, the two sides have laid emphasis on a free and open Indo-Pacific. In fact, earlier, Siddhant, uh, the Japanese side has also called India an indispensable player when it comes to ensuring a free and open Indo-Pacific. And that's been one of the main converging points as far as the India-Japanese relationship is concerned. Well, uh I, uh, the, the bilateral with the Japanese side is underway. There will be a bilateral with the German side as well. And later in the day, the Prime Minister will be meeting with the Italian Prime Minister. Uh, the focus, of course, is, of course, bilateral relationship. Uh, J Japan has been an important partner of, of uh, India in terms of uh, uh, development of uh, the bullet train. It played a key role when it comes to Delhi Metro as well. Uh, now, when it comes to Germany, the Indian Prime Minister was in Germany twice last year. and. The this is German uh, Chancellor's second visit to Delhi this uh, year, showcasing uh, the substantive part of the relationship. Then, of course, uh, uh, the Italian uh, Prime Minister was also in Delhi. A uh, lot of engagement with the Europeans. But all in all, if we look at uh, the bilateral context, there are 15 bilaterals of the Indian Prime Minister in three days here in Delhi. Three bilaterals have already happened, Mauritius, Bangladesh uh, and United States yesterday. Today, two bilaterals, UK and Japan, more bilaterals are still. Uh, lined up. Uh, we know that he's going to have a luncheon meeting with the French president, uh, hold meetings with the uh, Comorosian president uh, and Nigerian leadership. Uh, but nonetheless, multilateral events provide an opportunity, in fact, ample of opportunity to engage with the leaders on the sidelines. And that is uh, something uh, that we can uh, see right now. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.